Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today what we're going to talk about is some videos that are on the Marvel HQ YouTube channel, which are called the Venom Files. There's six episodes total right now that you can go check out. And I'll put a link just to the, the channel itself down below, because that's where you're going to find all the videos we're going to talk about today. And we're just going to talk real briefly about them, uh, because there's not a, too much to say, and I don't want to spoil basically everything that's in the episodes. Uh, but they're like little one-minute videos, and they kind of focus on one character, and they talk about who they are, they kind of give you a little bit of a background, and then they uh, tell you their stats, you know, like those old Marvel cards used to when you flipped them over, and they would say like strength and speed, you know, intelligence and all that. They kind of do that kind of thing, and I was like, oh, that's really cool. I don't know if that was intentional that they were doing that to reference those cards or not, but uh, but it comes across that way, and it's, it's very neat. And so this is a good way if you're watching the show and maybe you haven't been caught up on what's happened before, or you don't have a knowledge of just certain characters in the Marvel Universe. And I know a lot of you out there do, but I think it's more for a younger audience, obviously, because this cartoon kind of skews to a younger audience. So I always like this kind of stuff. There was a comic book I, I wanted to do at one point about time travel, and I wanted to do little videos like these to kind of explain the four major rules of time travel. So that way you can watch those YouTube videos and it would complement the book. Uh, and I would also have like a, a print, you know, like a, a page of the drawings that are in the video in the book too. So that way you didn't have to go to YouTube to watch it if you weren't like someone who watched stuff on YouTube. So it still was in the book no matter what, but I, I use it as a compliment and uh, kind of marketing material. And that's what I wanted to do. Unfortunately, the book never got made, but I still always like that idea to, you know, to use another platform to promote something that you're doing in another medium and uh, and so so these little videos i was like oh this is cool this is kind of like that time travel thing i was working on and uh, and i've seen other things like this too before in the past which is where i got i mainly got the idea from when you play games like bioshock or um, like fallout and they have those little videos of like the cartoons of the little nuke boy or whatever uh explaining stuff and then also like the uh, you know how the the powers work in bioshock that's kind of where i got the ideas from and that's what these kind of are in a different format you know it's like all right First episode, Captain Marvel. You know, who is Captain Marvel? Here, here's what she is. Here's her powers. Here, you know, uh, her name's Carol Danvers. You know, kind of tell you a little bit about her. And then it shows her at the end get, you know, possessed by a symbiote. And at the end, too, you have Ben Pronsky coming in as Venom. Or as not just Venom now. I guess he's the voice of the symbiotes, uh, it seems. And he comes in, though, as Venom. Or looks like Venom. He's got a Venom head. And he, uh, and he tells you a little snippet of stuff. So he's like, yes, she's very powerful. And now she's on our side. And you're like, oh, man, okay. So uh, so now they got Captain Marvel. I guess she's been possessed. So some of these characters, like I said, we haven't seen on the show. So I'm like, like Captain Marvel, for example, she hasn't appeared in the first two episodes. So I'm like, okay. So we now we know that maybe she's been possessed by a symbiote already. The second video they released was Iron Man. And Iron Man, what I really liked about his video, because obviously they show him, he's Tony Stark, he's, you know, uh, the, a rich, you know, billionaire, playboy, uh, you know, confident, cocky, all that stuff. All the things we like about Tony Stark to a degree. Um, and uh, and he comes in and they say at the end, when he gets possessed by a symbiote, Venom, or Ben Pronsky as Venom, uh, says, uh, you know, there's a reason why we possessed him first. And I was like, oh, they went after Iron Man first. Interesting. Because uh, maybe they knew if they gave Iron Man a minute to think about it he would find a way to send out pulse signals or, or radio waves or um or you know or or sound waves anything like that that would affect a symbiote fire whatever it is so they it seems like according to this video that they possessed iron man first so i was like oh that's pretty crazy so i'm wondering and i hope that we'll see this in an episode coming up because again in episode two of uh, maximum venom they they uh, you know revealed that the symbiotes or that the uh, avengers were out in space on a mission and that's why riri and uh, totally awesome hulk were there on guard at the tower so we know the avengers are out in space we know the guardians are out in space and they've already been captured because we saw the final moments that groot had in his mind and, uh, and he saw star lord get taken over before he got jettisoned out of the escape pod and then came to earth so uh, to warn peter parker so we already know that's happening. So I imagine these heroes probably are already possessed. Um, although I hope they do show a flashback uh, moment that shows them all get possessed because that would just be a cool scene. Um, then we also have Groot, uh, who is, uh, they, that's the third episode of the Venom Files that they do. And they show a little bit about Groot and, uh, and they talk about him being possessed by a symbiote. 
And at the end, when they say that, they're like, yeah, he's he's possessed. He's a symbiote now. He's one of us. We are Groot, is what they say, which it was so cool to hear Ben Pronsky say that. He's like, we are Groot. And uh, and then that's my terrible uh, Ben Pronsky impersonation. Um, but he, uh, he, you know, he does that. And then uh, they show, uh, they say that Groot now is a secret agent. They're like, yeah, no one's going to see him coming. And so I'm wondering, like, oh, was that a hint that Groot in episode two has already been possessed uh, by a symbiote he's already bonded with one and it's just lying dormant in him for now i don't know why it, it could because he did get tortured a little bit when they were creating the three alternate groups so i don't know like i'm like ah, i feel like the symbiote would have had to have revealed itself at that point being in pain or not so maybe it has you know Groot hasn't been possessed yet but maybe that's a storyline they're going to set up where a symbiote bonds with them and then lays dormant and then surprises the heroes at a moment when they think they have the upper hand, uh, that could be something. So using Groot as a potential, uh, you know, spy in a way, I was like, oh, that could be good and sad at the same time uh, as, a, as a fan of the character. So, uh, so yeah, so that was neat that they kind of talked about that in that Venom file. Then they also did Totally Awesome Hulk. Um, and so they show a little bit about Amadeus Cho and they show him getting possessed. And I think I saw Bizarnage and, you know, from the Venom site and a couple other people saying like, oh, so is the Hulk we see in the show, like, you know, on the, you know, on all the images we saw, uh, like the shirts and stuff, they're like, is that, uh, you know, not Banner Hulk? Is that totally awesome Hulk possessed? We'll, we'll see, I guess. We'll see, hopefully see in the next, uh, next episode or two. Uh, then they also showed Doctor Strange and they showed him, uh, you know, they talked a little bit about Steven and, and kind of his power set. And how, you know, when he gets bonded, uh, Venom calls him the symbiote supreme, which I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, that's like 70s cheese cool, but I, I a comic book cheese cool, but I dig it. Like, symbiote supreme. I was like, all right, I don't know if that's been used before in a comic or not. If so, I'm just blanking on it. But when I heard him say it, I was like, yeah, that's pretty cool. Symbiote supreme. Uh, and then the last episode that they showed for Venom Files was uh, Miles Morales. So it looks like Miles Morales, as we knew from the artwork, from the shirts. I even have a shirt that, you know, has Miles on it uh, with a symbiote on him. And they show uh, him and talk about his powers and that he can turn invisible and he can shoot a, uh, like a little electric burst out you know, called the Venom Blast, uh, which I think is a reference to the uh, Marvel vs. Capcom video game. Uh, and, that, and that's not something they created in the show. I mean, that, that Venom Blast came from the comic books. So, but I always wondered that. I'm like, oh, Venom Blast, I think, was something in Marvel vs. Capcom when Venom would be like, Venom Blast, uh, Venom Fang, you know, and stuff like that. So, so, uh, so yeah, and Venom Fang actually uh, also showed up in Res Evil 5. There was a piece of, because uh, that's made by Capcom, so there's like a piece of jewelry that Chris Redfield and Sheva can find that uh, that's, is called the Venom Fang. So, anyway, uh, Venom trivia for you guys. Uh, so, yeah, I'm a big Resident Evil fan, so... Uh, so yeah, so Miles Morales and they show him get possessed and now he's part of their their legion as well. And that's what it comes across. I kept thinking of that on a biblical term. Uh, you know, I the character of Legion has always been something that interested me. I even wrote a screenplay at one point called Legion and it was a, and it was about like a single demon possessing like, you know, 100 people and stuff like over the course of the story. And uh, and so I was thinking about this. I'm like, oh, the, the symbiotes seem like a different approach. They seem to have one voice, which is Ben Pronsky's voice. Granted, I don't know that for sure because we have seen those episodes so i don't know what they're going to do coming up but i'm just like based off of the ending of the first episode you kind of heard ben's voice in in when all those symbiotes were rattling around and he did all the growls and stuff he talked to us about that on the interview and then also with these venom files they talk they show everyone getting possessed and they have black symbiotes and i'm like oh i'm hoping we'll get other color symbiotes and i'm sure we will because i think in one of the uh, articles that announced felicia day as the voice of mary jane I think they also said that there was going to be Scream and uh, and Mania and stuff too, and and Scorn I think, and uh, Scorn I think is kind of purplish in the comics. Uh, Mania is obviously you know like a black venom symbiote, and then Scream is like yellow and red. So I'm hoping we'll still get different color versions of symbiotes, and I, I think we will. Uh, but seeing these, they, all these six characters seem to get possessed with like black symbiotes, and and all, and not even fully, just partial way, uh, kind of how Doctor Connors was in the first episode of. Of, uh, of you know the, the Maximum Venom cartoon. So I'm wondering if it's gonna be more of a Legion thing where it's like a bunch of symbiotes, but they all kind of have one unifying voice or something. I don't know, could be interesting. So uh, so yeah, and then also on Venom HQ or Marvel HQ, Venom HQ, I'm gonna rename the channel now, Marvel. I hope you, hope you like that. Um, you have uh, How to Talk Like Venom. So there is that video with Ben Pronsky and, uh, and we talked a little bit about that when I interviewed him, but you know, there's that you can watch and it's pretty great. He kind of goes through like playing the character and stuff and it was really awesome hearing him, you know, get so passionate about the role. Uh, but then also you can check out, they did a building, you know, cause I have the Venom Lego sets and that big Venom there on the end, uh, right there, 
they did a, a video of like a like a they should have i feel like they should have done a speed build where uh where they are not a speed build but they should have like flat you know uh sped up the footage um because it's like a i think it's like a one hour video i think uh but it's just someone you know building the lego set that comes with that venom and stuff uh which which is cool it's still a cool video that they made i can tell you know it's like hey it's quarantine a lot of us are indoors uh so whoever came up with that idea to sit and build the lego set major props as a former lego employee i definitely approve <laughs> so that was cool to see on there and then obviously you can see felicia day which i showed a little bit of that in our previous episode with the uh you know with the review and stuff but you can get a clip of felicia day talking about playing the role of mary jane and what it's meant to her and that she's like always been a fan of the character and i've known that because when i've i've seen her in interviews before where she talks about being a fan of mary jane and so it's cool i was like yeah awesome uh so there's some fun stuff on marvel hq so if you ever feel like hey seek you're not putting up enough videos for me or, or you know there's not enough venom content out there cruise by you know the marvel hq page like every like week or two and you might see some fun stuff on there. And even if you go back and look at some of the old stuff, like they had like those old Funko videos, because we've been talking about Marvel HQ and their YouTube channel for like two years now since we've been doing this show. And uh, and they have like little Funko Pop battles on there and all kind of fun stuff. And uh, it's a fun channel. So definitely go check them out, subscribe to them. And that way you can get some extra Venom content from time to time. So uh, that's it for this episode. I just wanted to go over these fun Venom files and some of the you know stuff they have on that channel and uh, direct you guys to it because it's pretty awesome. And uh, and granted, a lot of this stuff I know is geared towards kids, you know, and it has a. Uh, it has things that I know hardcore fans or adult fans are kind of like they roll their eyes at and they don't, maybe they don't appreciate on some level or they, or just don't, it's not their cup of tea kind of thing. I totally get that. But still like me, I just love ingesting Venom stuff, you know? And, uh, and even when I'm like, you know, critical of it, I do back away. I keep a distance from it, but I still have like an insulary knowledge of it. And, uh, and, but this stuff, I don't know, like maybe it's because I've always, like some of my early stuff when I was pitching, when I moved out to California, some of the early scripts I was writing was spec scripts for cartoons. And I've always wanted to, you know, get into that world and, and, and be a part of that world. And so uh, so I wanted to do more and more of that. Like I, I interned a couple times at some places to, you know, that worked in cartoons, but I never really pushed myself in that way for a career and uh and i think it's just because i like writing like that like i i, I don't know like and especially now i'm 38 i tell a lot more dad jokes you know around now that i have you know a, a nephews and stuff so uh so yeah it's like uh i don't know i, I guess it just you, it happens as you get older sometimes uh but i'm also a big kid at heart so just you know watching these cartoons i'm kind of like all right i can appreciate what they're doing so i am critical for sure and i had critiques of this show uh this episode in particular but by the end i realized okay this is what they're doing they're setting up peter there's a there's a reason for this there's a reason that this character is acting this way and this character is acting this way it's because they have an arc and that arc's going to eventually lead to their own growth but then also uh give peter parker a chance to shine and be a leader and that's important to the upcoming story i can imagine so yeah fun stuff i like uh, i like what they're doing over there and uh and i'm glad i can bring a lot of that content to you guys and i'll have more coming up soon uh, i'll go try to find some other comics or other things to talk about later this week and then i'll also have my interviews coming up with doc wyatt and uh, kevin burke and then also my secret interview that we're still I, it's kind of locked in right now but i until i record it you know i won't feel comfortable announcing it to you guys so give me some time but I promise you're going to love it because the, the person I would interview is a legend and I'm so excited to get that opportunity. So uh, thank you, Doc. Thank you, Kevin, for that opportunity. And thank you guys for being fans of the show. I, I really appreciate that. Thanks for listening to criticisms I had before and being so awesome about it. And uh, and thanks for you know helping me bring content to my viewers and getting them to hopefully jump on board and like this stuff. So thank you guys again and thank all of you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Leave your comments down below so we can continue our conversation down there. See you in the future. Peace.